Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Scholes. And where we began the week with an ending, we're going to end the week with the beginning. We have another long tale, and this story is one that should be much more familiar than the Yellow Dwarf, and is quite a bit less sad in the end, of course. And it's a tale that you may be familiar with, at least in parts. You may not be familiar with the full story of the Sleeping Beauty in the Wood. There were formerly a king and a queen who were so sorry that they had no children, so sorry that it cannot be expressed. They went to all the waters in the world, pilgrimages all ways were tried, and all to no purpose. At last, however, the queen had a daughter. There was a very fine christening, and the princess had for her godmothers all the fairies they could find in the whole kingdom. They found seven, that every one of them might give her a gift as was the custom of fairies in those days, and by this means the princess had all the perfections imaginable. After the ceremonies of the christening were over, all the company returned to the king's palace, where was prepared a great feast for the fairies. There was placed before every one of them a magnificent cover with a case of massive gold, wherein were a spoon, knife, and fork, all of pure gold set with diamonds and rubies. But as they were all sitting down at table, they saw come into the hall a very old fairy whom they had not invited, because it was above fifty years since she had been out of a certain tower, and she was believed to be either dead or enchanted. The king ordered her a cover, but could not furnish her with a case of gold as the others, because they had only seven made for the seven fairies. The old fairy fancied she was slighted and muttered some threats between her teeth. One of the young fairies who sat by her overheard how she grumbled, and, judging that she might give the little princess some unlucky gift, went, as soon as they rose from table, and hid herself behind the hangings, that she might speak last, and repair as much as she could the evil which the old fairy might intend. In the meanwhile, all the fairies began to give their gifts to the princess, The youngest gave her for a gift that she should be the most beautiful person in the world. The next, that she should have the wit of an angel. The third, that she should have a wonderful grace in everything she did. The fourth, that she should dance perfectly well. The fifth, that she should sing like a nightingale. And the sixth, that she should play all kinds of music to the utmost perfection. The old fairy's turn coming next, with a head shaking more with spite than age, she said that the princess should have her hand pierced with the spindle and die of the wound. This terrible gift made the whole company tremble, and everybody fell a-crying. At this very instant the young fairy came out from behind the hangings and spake these words aloud. Assure yourselves, O king and queen, that your daughter shall not die of this disaster. It is true, I have no power to undo entirely what my elder has done. The princess shall indeed pierce her hand with a spindle, but instead of dying, she shall only fall into a profound sleep, which shall last a hundred years, at the expiration of which a king's son shall come and awake her. The king to avoid the misfortune foretold by the old fairy, caused immediately proclamation to be made whereby everybody was forbidden on pain of death to spin with a distaff and spindle, or to have so much as any spindle in their houses. About fifteen or sixteen years after, the king and queen, being gone to one of their houses of pleasure, the young princess happened one day to divert herself in running up and down the palace. When going up from one apartment to another, she came into a little room on the top of the tower, where a good old woman alone was spinning with her spindle. This good woman had never heard of the king's proclamation against spindles. 
And that is where we're going to end part one of The Sleeping Beauty in the Wood. A story that is, at least so far, terribly familiar, isn't it? And it's always bothered me that the young fairy, when she mitigates the old fairies, well, we can just call it a curse at some point, can't we? And it's a hundred years, it's an awfully long time. She could have probably gone with a shorter time period for this profound sleep, but, but she doesn't. And a hundred years it is. Next week, we'll pick back up with The Sleeping Beauty in the Wood and see what happens, which we all know is going to happen, when the young princess meets this old woman and her spinning. This is Dan Scholes for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>